<clears throat> All right, so I've been reading this interview Terry did in this uh, magazine, and uh, I left off at in the interview it was uh, where is this? All right, so I left off at uh. Although Farrell says she never really tired of playing Dax, she does cite the uneven workload as frustrating. There are quite a few episodes like that where you only have one line or one scene with three lines. You try to keep that positive attitude though, she explains. That helps you keep going through a long run where sometimes it seems like you're doing the same thing all the time. Other aspects of playing Dax indeed made Farrell feel as if she were frozen in time. <laughs> it's kind of strange because my hair and my wardrobe were basically the same for six years. <laughs> oh wow. It's almost appropriate because it's sci-fi, she pauses. It almost feels like quantum physics, everything existing at the same time because each year wasn't different enough to stand out specifically in my mind anyway. There's a blending of the years. That said, Farrell maintains that Dax both met and exceeded her expectations. I think it's very difficult when they have nine characters and so many reoccurring characters to really focus on each character and have the audience feel like they really know them inside and out. I don't think I had that kind of experience with Dex. I don't feel like I got to know where she really was coming from but to play her for six years it was great aside from the episodes dealing with the Dax Wharf relationship over the past two seasons one of Farrell's favorite experiences is rejoined in which the ex-wife of the Trill symbiote Dax visited the station that was challenging because I got to explore Dax's sexuality because of the duality of living in a man's body and a woman's body several times over and over again she recalls and it was very exciting because it was something the studio fought to tell that story as much as she enjoyed the opportunity to do drama Farrell found herself missing the fight the fight scenes which she didn't really have in the sixth season a couple of seasons every time I had something to do I had a fight or I had at least one scene where I was battling Worf in the hollow deck or hollow suite just for exercise but I really didn't do that last year and I missed that because it's it's exciting and fun she moves muses from the outset Dax could always be counted on for a droll perspective on the action <clears throat> That was something that in part came out of how Farrell chose to approach the character, someone whose backstory is so vastly different from any normal existence. Right from the beginning, I thought, wait a minute, how do you hang out with, a, with human beings when you're 350 years old, he calls Farrell. So I started trying to make lines here and there sarcastic. One thing Farrell laments is the lack of consistency with respect to growing and evolving Dax's interactions with the other characters. For example, she says, I wish Dax's relationship with Sisko would have been more fleshed out than it was. Dax always had a soft spot for Ferengi bartender Quark, Armin Shimmerman, and yet there, that was never stretched out either. I would not see Armin for shows and shows and then suddenly it would be like a little thing. And you're like, wait a minute, there's no through line to this. Uh, I'm not in quarks all the time. I should almost be in quarks all the time for my downtime. 
maybe not drinking a beer but you know especially if I'm the other character outside of the other Ferengi that likes him in recent years Farrell has gotten a charge out of the fact that her character was responsible for flying DS9's resident ship, the Defiant. When I found that out, I was like, yeah, she infuses. This is my seat. You can't sit here. Sometimes Farrell was a bit territorial about flying the Defiant. In fact, in Star Trek First Contact, I was like, what do you mean, Worf's flying the Defiant? Come on, Mr. Berman. Let me fly it. <laughs> Just for a minute. I can be in the bowels of the Enterprise afterwards. She recalls in a pleading, earnest voice before breaking out into laughter. But someone else flew my ship. Living proof that there is life after Deep Space Nine, Farrell landed a role opposite Ted Danson in his new mid-season replacement sitcom Becker which is coincidentally produced by Paramount as well. There were a <clears throat> couple people who weren't sure if I could do it or not, but thank God for my old bosses who convinced them that I could do it. She says good-naturedly, that was cool. So one week I'm working on Deep Space Nine, I get killed. The next week I'm working on Becker. Farrell has no regrets about her decision to leave the show. I'm sorry for the fans who are upset about it, she says generously, and I thank them for liking my character enough to have it upset them. Although Jadzia Dax, as we know her, was killed in the line of duty, the worm-like symbiont Dax lives on, and don't rule out Farrell returning in some capacity. I mean, nobody really ever dies on Star Trek, and I, and since I work for the same company, I said to executive producer Ira Bear, look, if you want me to come back for the final, you can always call me. And here's some pictures. And it has some other stuff. Is, and yeah, was that the end of the article? Yeah. And so the rest of this magazine has some uh, commercials and stuff. This is the Dax toy, or one of them. Let's see here. Let's focus. Sometimes it doesn't want to focus, so yeah. And there's some other toys, uh, real old school toys. For some of the uh, other characters and stuff. Here's some more stuff. Oh wow. Here's some more stuff that used to be for sale. Oh and this is oh wait a minute. Did it say Yeah, yeah. It says it on this page too. These are new. <laughs> oh wow. These are new. <laughs> well maybe maybe not so new, but uh you know, back in the day. Uh <laughs> these were new at the time, I guess. Some stuff that they uh, used to uh, sell or have for sale. More toys.
this is one of the games real old Star Trek game <laughs> the dice game more games and stuff Star Trek pinball oh I remember this I actually played this game Star uh, Starfleet Academy it was uh, the storyline was like from the original Star Trek but I thought it was kinda cool at the time you have a you had a bunch of uh, missions and stuff and uh, you would fly like some of the different spaceships and I thought that was kind of cool these are some little models of uh, the various uh, Star Trek things the ships and stuff this is some uh, books some more toys and this is what I was talking about before this is how the Star Trek uh, webpage the dot com used to look so uh you see here come on see how it has this uh, how it used to have the Star Trek webpage how it used to have like a next generation like layout or setup and stuff like some of the, the buttons or like pictures and stuff like this is you know old old school it had this like the next generation some of the buttons and stuff for pictures that you would find on like the, ne the next generation or this one looks like it's uh, Deep Space Nine but uh, yeah that's how it used to be um, I think there was another was there another page for that oh wow some real old school conventions <laughs> yeah here's some more pictures and yeah the layout for the web page just used to be totally different like when I went on there uh, recently again I hadn't been on there in years and uh, yeah it was just a little bit different <laughs> 